Hey, fourth graders, Miss Seals. We're back for our second science lab of the school year. So for the next couple of weeks, we are going to be talking about something called physical properties. I'm sure you've already started talking about this in your science class. And remember, physical properties are just anything we can describe about an object. We could describe its color, its size, its shape, its texture, temperature, flexibility, its state of matter, which is solid, liquid, or gas. All of those are physical properties or ways we can describe objects. Today, we're going to be talking about one physical property called mass which hopefully sounds familiar to you. Um, you have learned about math before. You have two learning targets today. The first one says I can collect, record, and analyze information using tools, including balances. So I'm gonna show you how to use two different types of science tools called balances. And I can measure, compare, and contrast physical properties of matter, including mass. All right, so we are all talking all about math today. So I'm going to share my screen with you so that we can look at this PowerPoint. All right, so this says mass, and then there are your learning targets again. I can collect, record, and analyze information using tools, including balances. Here are the two types of balances we're gonna be talking about today. And I can measure, compare, and contrast physical properties of matter, including mass. So first, we need to understand what is mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Mass is not the same thing as weight. A lot of times people get confused and use those words interchangeably. Mass and weight are not the same thing. Weight measures the, the gravitational pull on an object. So it will change based on the gravitational pull. Have you ever heard that your weight would be different on the moon? Like sometimes people say on the moon, I would only weigh 32 pounds. That's because the gravitational pull on the moon is different than it is on earth. Okay, but mass doesn't change. An object's mass would be the same on the moon or anywhere else because it's a measure of the amount of matter that's in an object. And the amount of matter that's in an object is not going to change whether you're on Earth, on the moon, on Jupiter, on Mars, it's going to be the same. Okay, so that's important that you understand the difference. Mass does not change. Mass is measured using science tools called balances, and mass is measured in grams. That's our unit of measurement. This is represented by a lowercase g. For example, 12 grams would be written as 12, and then you can put a lowercase g to represent grams. All right, so the first kind of balance that I'm going to show you how to use and talk to you about is called a primary balance. Hopefully you recognize this. I know that if you've been at Pershing Park, you have definitely seen these and used these before. Um, definitely in kindergarten and first grade, maybe in second and third as well. All right, so I'm gonna show you this video about how to use a primary balance. So to find the mass of an object using a primary balance, you have to have these. These are called gram weights. So I told you that when we measure mass, the unit we are using is grams. So each of these represents a different amount of grams. This one, it's probably hard for you to see, says 10 grams. So this gram weight represents 10 grams. This blue one here, represents five grams, and then the red one is one gram. So in order to use the primary balance to find the mass of an object, I have to have gram weights. So what you do to find the mass of an object using a primary balance is you're gonna take the object that you want to find the mass of, we're gonna do this pen, and you're gonna carefully place it on one side of your primary balance. It doesn't matter which one, but notice how I'm placing it in there nice and gently. I'm not throwing it. I'm not tossing it, okay? So 
this side of my primary balance when I put my pen in it went all the way down. That's because this side of my balance has more mass than this side. That makes sense, right? This side has a pen in it. This side doesn't have anything in it. So of course, the pen is going to have more mass than this side, right? In order to find the mass of the pen, I'm going to be using my gram weights and adding them to this side of my primary balance. I'll know that I have found the mass of my pen when the two sides of my primary balance are equal or even, okay? So as I do this, I want you to make sure to notice that I'm adding the gram weights very carefully. I'm adding them one at a time, all right? After I show you how to do this one, we'll do another one kind of more together. So you're always gonna start with your biggest amount of gram weight that you have, all right? Because if not, if I just decide to start with my ones, that could take forever. I could just be adding one gram weight at a time forever and ever and ever. And if my object has a lot of mass, that could take a while. So you're gonna use the largest amount of gram weight that you have. They do make 20 gram weights, they make 50 gram weights, they even make 100 gram weights. For this, my largest one is 10, so I'm gonna start with 10. I'm gonna add the 10 gram weight to this side very carefully and I'm gonna watch what happens. I'm not gonna pull on the primary balance, I'm not gonna tug on it, I'm just gonna let it kind of balance out. You can kind of help it by placing your hands underneath, okay? I notice that this side of my primary balance where the pen is, is still down a little bit more, right? It's, it's lower than my 10 grams. That means that my, my pen, the mass of my pen is more than 10 grams. So I'm not done. I'm not finished until the two sides are equal, okay? Now, do you think I need to add another 10 gram weight? I don't need to, I don't think I need to go with a 10 because the two sides are not that much different. The pen is only a little bit lower than my 10 gram weight, which means I only need to add a little bit more mass to this side for my two sides to be equal. So I'm gonna go to my ones and I'm gonna add one at a time very carefully. Let it balance out. Hmm, what do you think? This side's a little bit lower. Let's see what happens if I add one more. Looks about equal to me, what do you think? Pretty good, looks like the two sides are even. So that means I have found the mass of my pen. The pen has the same mass as what is on this side of my primary balance, okay? So now what I need to do is I need to count and figure out how many grams I have on this side of my primary balance, okay? So remember, we added in a 10. There's my 10 gram weight, so there's 10. Now I'm gonna count by ones, 11, 12. So that means the mass of my pen is 12 grams, okay? Let's do one more together. This time I'm going to find the mass of my scissors, all right? So what's the first thing I need to do with the object that I'm measuring? You're exactly right. I'm gonna carefully place it on one side of my balance. All right, there we go. So. What am I gonna start with? What do I need to do next? Am I gonna just add one gram weights and keep going with ones until I find the mass of my scissors? Now that's gonna take forever. I'm gonna start with my tens, all right? So here's 10. Didn't really move much. That tells me I still have a long way to go. Here's 20. I'm counting by tens because each of these green ones is worth 10 grams. Here's 30, here's 40, not really budging, is it? Here's 50, it moved a little, still not a lot. Let me get some more 10 gram weights.
Here's 60. Oh, starting to move a little bit more. Still not, I still don't have the mass. This side is still lower. Here's 70. Oh, there we go. There's some movement. Hmm. Pretty close, right? I noticed this side is a little bit lower. That means I may have added too much. So I'm gonna take out one of my 10, and then I'm gonna go to my fives. Side is still a little bit lower. I don't know if I need to add five. I'm gonna try the ones. Hmm, what do you think? Maybe one more? Or is it gonna be too much? Ooh, looks good. Looks exactly right. I know that I have found the mass of my scissors because now the two sides of my balance are equal or even. That means the mass on this side is the same as the mass on this side, okay? So remember, now I need to count my gram weights and see how many grams I have over here. That will tell me the mass of my scissors. I'm gonna start with my biggest one, which are my tens. So we're gonna count by tens. There's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, that's all my tens. Now I have a five. I'm gonna count by five. There's 65. Now I go to my ones. 66, 67, 68. So that means the mass of my scissors is 68 grams. All right, so that's how to use a primary balance. The other type of balance that we're gonna talk about how to use today, which may be new to you, I don't think you've been taught how to use this one yet, so make sure you're paying attention because this can be tricky. This is called a triple beam balance, all right? Here's a little zoom in or an up close shot of it. It's called a triple beam because there are three beams or arms, one, two, three. Each beam measures in a different denomination or amount. The beam at the back, this is measuring by tens. Do you see how these numbers are counting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60? So that's like the 10 gram weight, okay? The beam in the middle is measuring by 100s, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. And the one at the front measures in one gram amounts and even down to one tenth of a gram. Do you notice how between each big number there are nine tiny little dashes? Each one of those is one tenth of a gram. Okay. I know that's kind of tricky, but it'll make more sense in a minute. Before you start measuring with a triple beam balance, you wanna make sure that these two lines are even. This means your triple beam balance is calibrated or ready to use. If the two lines are not even, you'll turn the knob at the end of the pan until they are even. And I'm gonna show you that in just a second in the video. All right, here's how to use a triple beam. All right, so here is a triple beam balance. I'm going to quickly go over the different parts of the triple beam balance, and then we're going to be practicing how to use it. So as I told you before, this is a tool that measures mass. We use the unit of grams when measuring mass. Now, the triple beam balance, the advantage of using the triple beam balance over the primary balance is the triple beam balance is more accurate or more specific. The triple beam balance can find the mass of an object all the way down to one-tenth of a gram, okay? And I'll explain what that means in just a second. So here is our triple beam balance. 
This part of our balance is called the pan. This is where we are going to be putting the object that we're finding the mass of in just a second. As I just explained to you in the PowerPoint, the reason it's called a triple beam is because it has three arms or beams. Each one of these is measuring mass in a different amount or denomination. This one in the back is measuring um, grams by tens. This one in the middle is measuring by one hundreds. And then this one at the front does ones and even down to one tenth. Do you see those little bitty tiny dashes or lines? Those are showing one tenth of a gram, all right? So before you start measuring an object, you wanna make sure of a couple of things. One thing is you want to make sure all of your gram weights are pushed all the way over to the edge. They should all be at zero, okay? Additionally, like I just explained in the slide before this, you want to make sure that these two lines right here are lined up as close as they can get, okay? If they are not, down here at the end of the pan, there's a little knob that you can turn to calibrate it. Or, help, or get it ready to use, okay? So before you ever use a triple beam balance, you need to make sure of those two things. The weights are pushed all the way over and that these two lines are equal or even. If those two things are ready, then your triple beam is ready to use. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're gonna find the mass of this bottle of blue. All right, so I'm gonna carefully set the object I'm measuring onto the pan, and you can see that this arm went up, right? All the way up. That's telling me that my, whatever is over here has more mass than what's over here, okay? So now here's where I'm going to use my gram weights to find the mass of my glue bottle. Just like with the primary balance, you're always going to start with your largest amount, which in this case, is the hundreds. So I'm gonna pick up, that's the one in the middle, and for the hundreds and the tens, did you notice when I showed you up close that there are these little notches? You have to make sure that you are putting the weight into those notches. You can kind of hear it click. Did you hear it click? That means I know it's notched into place. My arm didn't really move, so I'm going to keep going. Oh, did you hear it kind of latch into place? Now, my arm went all the way down. That means I have too much, okay? That means 200 grams is too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna go back to 100. And now I'm gonna use my tens, which is the beam in the back. Again, I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna listen for it to lock into place. It didn't move, that means I need to keep going. Still didn't move. All right, it went all the way down. That tells me I have too much. I'm gonna go back to the one before it. And now I'm gonna use my ones and that's the beam in the front. For this one, it doesn't have to latch into place you're just going to carefully slide it. And you're gonna keep sliding it until these two lines are matched up or equal. Then I'll know I have found the mass of my bottle of glue. Oh, I think, oh, I just messed it up, sorry. I think I'm almost there. I'm gonna slide it back just a tiny bit. Give it a second to kind of balance out. I think I need to go like just a tiny, tiny bit more. All right, looks pretty good. What do you think? Looks matched up to me. That means I have found the mass of my glue bottle. That means that the gram weights that are over here have the same mass as the bottle of glue, okay? So, but we're not done yet. Now we need to figure out 
what the mass is. So in order to do that, we have to add up all of these numbers. So this is kind of like when you in math are learning about expanded form. I have to take whatever my hundreds say and add it to my tens and add it to my ones and my tenths. Okay, so if you need to use a paper piece of paper to do this, that's great. I have graph paper here so that I can practice lining up my decimals. All right, so my hundreds show 100 grams. So I'm gonna add 100. And then my tens are showing 40 grams. My ones, oh, this is hard to see from this angle. Oh, my ones, you got lucky, no decimals on this one. My ones are showing exactly one gram. So I'm gonna add those numbers up. If you can do that in your head, that's great. We're adding 100 plus 40 plus one. If you need to get a piece of paper and line up your numbers and add it this way, that's great too. All right, so when I add up 100 plus 40 plus one, I get 141 grams. So that means the mass of my glue bottle is 141 grams. Notice how I labeled my number with that lowercase g for grams. All right, are you ready to try another one? Let's do one together again. All right, I'm going to take off my glue bottle. What do I need to do before I can start measuring the mass of another object? Is my triple beam balance ready? I see two things that are wrong with my triple beam balance. Can you name one? You're exactly right. My weights need to go all the way back. So I'm going to push all of my weights to zero as far as they can go. And I need to make sure, remember that these two lines are equal or even. Looks like they're a little bit off. So remember, I can use this knob down at the end and turn it to help calibrate. Let's see if that helped at all. Tiny bit more. Let's see. No, oh, maybe I did it too much. Tricky. We're just going to keep turning it until those two lines are equal. Making it worse. Let's see. <laughs> All right, looks pretty good, right? We're going to call it calibrated. Okay, so. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my object, very carefully set it on the pan. All right, who remembers which of my green weights am I going to start with? Am I going to start with the tens or the hundreds or the ones? The hundreds, you're exactly right. So remember, on the, the 100s and the tens, I have to make sure it locks into that little notch. So I'm picking it up. I'm moving it. Oh, locked into place. Nothing happened, so that tells me I need to keep going. Nothing happened again. Need to keep going. Oh, there we go, locked into place. Okay, my arm went all the way down. That tells me I went too far. So I'm gonna go back to the one right before. 
that was not enough. And I'm gonna come back to my tens and I'm gonna move my tens now, making sure each time that I'm locking that gram weight into place. It went all the way down, that tells me I have too much. Going back to the one before it, and now I'm going to use my ones and just slide it over until my lines match up right here. I'm trying to do this so you guys can still see. A little bit more, I'm thinking. Move it closer so you guys can see a little better. Oh, looks pretty good, right? All right, those two lines are matched up. That tells me I have found the mass of my hand sanitizer. So what do I need to do now? Am I done? You're right. I need to add up my gram weight going to start with my hundreds. My hundreds are showing, can you see? Hard for you to see, isn't it? My, my hundreds are showing 200 grams. My tens are showing 30 grams. And then I go to my ones. This is where you have to use decimals because each of those lines is a tenth of a gram. So let's start with our whole number first. I see that I have seven whole grams. It's not to the eight yet. So my whole number is going to be seven. And then each of those lines is a tenth of a gram. And it looks like of course, it's right between the one and the two. We're gonna go with the one. Do you see how it's just barely past the first little line after the seven? So that we're gonna call that one tenth. In other words, it would be written as seven point one or seven and one tenth. So I have 200 plus 30 plus seven and one tenth, okay? Now I'm gonna add all those numbers up. Make sure when you're adding decimals, you're lining up your numbers. That's why I'm using this graph paper to help me line up my, my place value, okay? So I'm going to add these up. When I add these up, 200 plus 30 plus seven and one tenth equals 237 and one tenth gram. That means the mass of this hand sanitizer is 237 and one tenth gram. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you understand how to use a triple beam. We'll be doing some more practice. All right, so I know that was a lot of information However, um, we'll be practicing some more, okay? I know it's kind of, it was kind of hard for you to see. Um, you know, we're doing the best we can with virtual, but once you guys come back to school, hopefully we can get some more practice in where you can actually use the triple beam. All right, so now it says, what do you know about mass? Go into Schoology where you found this video and take the short quiz on mass. This isn't for a grade. I just want to see what you guys know. All right, I hope that you guys learned a lot. I hope that you had some fun. I will see you for our next science lab. Bye guys.